Okay, um, being three o'clock, I'm going to call the um, meeting to order. Um, working out the license commission, August 1st, 2018. Uh, commissioners are present: Brian Campanelli, Natasha Yakova, Alan Khan. Um, at this time, I'd like to announce that we are audio video recording, and um, item two is to take any public comment. Is there any at this time? Seeing none, we'll move on to the first uh, item, number three, application for short-term liquor license, the Beer Guy, LLC, um, October 13, 2018, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., Look Memorial Park, 300 North Main Street, Florence, Cystic fibrosis, fibrosis Fundraiser, Wine and Malt. Can you please state your name for the record, please? David Capriati. How are you? I'm very well. Good. Thank you for coming. Can you tell us a little bit about what you got going on here? I was contacted by uh, Olinda Kenny, the Cystic Fibrosis <coughs> uh, District Supervisor. She's a proceed benefit for the Cystic Fibrosis 65 Wellness Program for Children's Boston Benefit Expansion Program for the hospital for Medical Center for Pulmonary Research of Boston's Children. They're having a uh, 5K fundraiser at Look Park, and they are doing a, like I said, they're doing a 5K, so they, they want to offer uh, a variety of food, and then they wanted to add beer and wine to their list, because I guess they're going to be doing um, awards, and they have some pretty high-end people coming out of Boston to uh, participate in their event. And I fill out some paperwork, and here I am here asking for the permit for through my business through the Beer Guy LLC. We are a full service uh, beer and wine caterer. We're located out of South Alley, Massachusetts. Uh, we've been in business for one year. Uh, we do all types of events. We do fundraisers, we do car shows, cruise nights. We just finished uh, the Falls Fest for South Hadley. Uh, we're contracted through the new MGM program. We're downtown Springfield. We're doing their grand opening. Uh, we have a lot. We have a lot on our plate to to do, and I'm I'm, I'm taking this on, helping the helping the cystic fibrosis company out by adding another venue to our schedule, and I'm expecting it to be a very good fundraiser and benefit to them. We are making a partial donation of our proceeds to them. Okay. So we like to help them out. We've done it before in the past for type of benefits. We also do a fundraiser with uh, uh, Laser 99.3. We do fundraisers for TG O'Connor. We raised about 2,500 bucks to help the little puppies and kitties out too. So, great. We like to just spread it out a little bit. That's all. Fantastic. Can you um, tell us uh, how you're going to be set up at Look Park? I'm not quite sure exactly how because um, I, I guess Sean, the coordinator at Look Park, uh, he'll be there that day because they want to set up the food trucks because in the, the Dowd area where we're gonna be, there is no power. So because we're, a, we're our full service, the facility, the vehicle that we're bringing, the trailer, uh, is fully powered by itself. So the other food service vendors may draw off some of our power. So he may move us somewhere or however he sets us up. I'm, I'm leaving that up to Sean at Look Park for his guidance when, once we get there for, sure. for his <clears throat> I guess we're more concerned with, um, you know, like delineation of where you're going to be serving drinks and, you know, things like that. Usually when they have them, they have like a beer tent or a, guard, a beer garden or something. Well, most likely, I'm assuming we'll have a beer garden. We do, we do have uh, we do have vinyl fencing to set up for, for a containment area. Right. But I, I don't know how much space he's going to allow us to set up. But in, in his uh, email, he did set up, he did say that they will allow us to serve and everything can be drank within the, the Dowd area. Okay. Perfect. So I, I have a copy of his text message through Linda through the through the hospital. But he will be present to I'll follow his guidelines or Low Park's guidelines of how they wish it to be done. Okay. So what's your trailer like? You it's a trailer. it's a twenty foot uh, state of the art. It looks basic it kind of looks like a car trailer. It's a little bit bigger. Um, it's fully self contained. The nose cone on it's fully has a full power it's computerized. The side of the trailer lifts up on the side and it's all taps on the side of the trailer. It's a 75 inch LED TV that retracts out from the side of the trailer. Hmm. Um, we have satellite, full Wi-Fi. Um, we, we do have a, a stereo system that does with the trailer if, if it's required for some stuff. Cause we do, we do weddings. Okay. 
Okay. When, I, when, I, when I designed the trailer with uh, Ralph Sacamoni out of Boston, um, he preferred because we were, were doing beer and wine through a caterer, through a caterer's trailer, that we serve face to face uh, with the public instead of most caterers' trailers, you stand and you hand something out through the window. Yeah. So we're, we we actually stand in front. Yeah, I got a picture right here. Yeah. Looking at it. Thank you. Yeah. So when you do events like this, you have the materials to to create the delineated space. Yes. With that, okay. Yeah. So when Sean. Yeah, we did. You. We did the Holyoke. We do, we do stuff for uh, Jane at the for the licensing board at Holyoke. We do the road race and we do the parade at Kmart Plaza, and we have a. Uh, we have that really nice vinyl fencing that's, that's it's like all snap all put together. So we do like a beer garden. We do the beer garden for the road race. Uh, they set us up on Dwight Street and they give us a, a hundred by thirty foot area. And we bring out tables and chairs and flower things on the table. I mean, we're we're, we're pretty classy. We set it up very nice. If you if you go on the website there, you can you can see a lot of nice pictures how we set our stuff up. Okay, thank you. Do you have any other questions? I will make a motion. Um, I move to approve the application for a short-term liquor license for the Beer Guy LLC on October 13, 2018 from 11 to 7 at Lake Memorial Park for the Cystic Fibrosis Fundraiser. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Sure. Um, I, <coughs> what's that? I said you need in the morning. Okay. I, I'm, at, I'm leaving for my... Uh, we're going to the beach with my wife for okay. our honey, for not for our wedding anniversary for ten years, so I won't be back till Monday. Okay. Well, let's see. Oh, we have plenty of time. You can yeah. come next week. I, I can come in next week. <coughs> and get a check, and we can take care of it from then. Yep. Thank, thank, you thank you very much. Have a nice thank day. Maybe we'll see you at the park. Stop by. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Item number four: application for class two used car dealer license from Gardner Junior DBA Quality Cars, three forty five Damon Road. Can you say your name for the record, please? So, Ronald Gardner, senior. senior. Oh, senior. Okay. No worries. Sorry about that. Um, okay, can you tell us a little bit about what you have going here? Well, so what I'm doing is primarily I do handicap vans uh, in the $10,000 range. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's pretty much it. It's a specialty type of thing. Serves a Provides a service, really. Trying to trying to put those together in that price range. Okay, great. All right. I don't know if you have any other questions. You saw the note below. I did. Um, yeah. No. Didn't see my building commissioner. Yeah. Okay. So the only thing you're going to have on on that site, um, I guess, there's really no constraints. Is there?
to approve the application for change of manager of New Hampshire Franklin and Hamden Agricultural Society, DBA Green <coughs> County Fairgrounds at 54 Fair Street in Northampton. The new proposed manager is James Prisbeck. A second, all in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Well, Who's the second one? The second one. There's two licenses. Oh, okay. two licenses. You just have to. Yeah, so okay. just make a motion for that. I'll make a motion for the change of manager for uh, the same party for the second liquor license. 00075 RS0900, um, newly proposed manager James Prisbeck. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Okay, item number seven is a uh, violation of hearing. <coughs> uh, today we're here to <coughs> uh, hear the violation hearing for Notch 8 Inc. DBA Union Station, Tunnel Bar, Platform Bar, and the Deck. Um, although Notch 8 Inc. is one corporation with four different DBAs, these violations re relate to incidents that happen at the Deck. Um, violations occurred on June 9, 2018 are as follows. Um, rules for extended hours in the city of Northampton. Number two, no admittance of patrons shall be permitted by a licensee after 1 a.m. No patron present on the premise <coughs> on or before 1 a.m. who leaves the premises for any reason shall be readmitted to the premises after 1 a.m. on that day. Uh, number two here, rules for extended hours in the city of Northampton. Number three, all licenses granted extended closing hours must display signs and a form approved by the license commission at each entrance to the license premise stating that no admission will be allowed after 1 a.m. and at each exit stating no patron leaving the premises will be readmitted after 1 a.m. Um, rules for extended hours in the city of Northampton. Number six, all licensees granted extended closing hours must have an agent or employee present at each entrance and exit during extended hours to monitor compliance with the foregoing rules. Each agent or employee shall be easily identifiable as an agent or employee of the licensee. And finally, Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 12, licenses authorizing sale of beverages to be drunk on premises. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to open the violation hearing. Do you have a second? I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye, okay. Any witnesses that are here to speak on behalf of the violation, please stand and raise your right hand. <coughs> Do you swear or affirm that the information you are about to give is true and correct to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Okay, thank you. At this time I'd like to ask any uh, representative of the police department to present uh, their findings. <clears throat> how are you? Good, sir. How are you? Good. My name is Officer Benjamin Beaver, North Kent Police Department. Um, on the day in question, um, we were called to the deck early in the evening, um, approximately 11:22, uh, um, for a large-scale disturbance with uh, 20 or 30 individuals. Um, this disturbance had nothing to do with the establishment itself. It involved uh, individuals having uh, problems with each other. It spilled out into the parking lot. While that disturbance was ongoing, there was many individuals leaving the deck area with beverages either getting involved or trying to separate parties in that fight. Uh, staff from the deck was trying to help us and separate these individuals. However, they failed to stop the beverages leaving the process. Um, later in the evening, uh, approximately 1.30, um, myself and Officer Wojcicki uh, were standing there monitoring the crowds leaving the bar. Uh, at that time, on the north side of the deck, we observed a female walk from the bike path 
onto the deck. Uh, a member of the bar staff um, was standing there. However, had his back turned to the entrance and allowed this patron to walk directly in and sit down. Um, it was confirmed through employees that this person did not work at the establishment. Um, and at that point, after this second observed violation of the night, we decided to conduct a full liquor compliance check and observe that there was no signs. Um, also at the deck, there's a large, well, let's say a small patio, um, which at the time, they, uh, a lot of people sit down there with beverages and there was kind of like free access. Um, a lot of times this place had cleared out, but underage individuals could easily go in there and sit down and other people could go down and sit there and buy them beverages and provide them to them. So that was a concern to us. Um, those are the violations. Um, with regards to everything that's happened after, they have made many accommodations to fix these violations, to include closing off the area, posting signs, um, having adequate staff around the whole deck to make sure these things aren't happening, making sure that people aren't reaching over the railings and grabbing these beverages. Um, Mr. Mick and his staff have always been very gracious to us at North Carolina Police Department. They've always helped us with our assistance we ask of them, either during disturbances, uh, providing videos if they have them, of incidents that go on in the bar. Um, so I would you take that into consideration as well. But based on these facts, there was violations on that night. where the gentleman was standing on the patio part of the deck below the actual you should call it the facility um, there's a stone patio and separating the patio from the parking lot is a strain of lights there's, there was a gentleman outside that area smoking a cigarette which is in compliance not a problem however he was reaching over these lights now standing in the parking lot drinking a beer and he put it back down um, I advised bar staff what was going on they removed the gentleman and they took care of that situation. Um, I have a quick question yes. regarding that. Um, I know that we have a, we're not allowed, we don't have an open container situation. Under correct. The law against that, correct? What is the um, citation or what you would issue to a patron that would go ahead and take that drink and walk down the parking lot or the sidewalk with it. Ultimately that person could be arrested. Okay. And they, so it's, they, an they, it's an arrestable offense. Um, if you are having an open container on city property That's or it, your discretion. Yes. Okay. And generally we try to give warnings for that. Um, multiple violations of that we tend to arrest. But we try to, you know, give the warnings and advise people, hey you can't be doing this. Um, okay. you can't be arrested for it. So the night that when thirty or forty people rushed off of the deck um, were there any arrests made of the people they had their drinks in their hands or not? No, because the amount of staff we hauled out on the nights with the amount of people that were involved in the service trying to figure out what actually happened, mm -hmm. um, we didn't have the ability to enforce the alcohol because that's a minor offense at that point, True. dealing with this large city yeah. servant. So, um, I'm sure it was a daunting situation. For but, I mean, I was the first one that I was there for about a minute by myself with all these people fighting. I was just trying to grab people and try to find the main aggressors and arrest them. And, but ultimately we do we get to charge disorder conduct but we kind of let parties separate and go their way instead of trying to arrest 20 or 30 people yeah right yeah, okay aside from the interruption go ahead no, okay. yeah because it seems so reading through it it seems that it seems like you visited it the, um, yeah. the deck a few different times and right. you talked to them about um uh discussing about the patio the, yeah about access to the patio correct was one of the things and then the You know, so it seems, I mean, is that just part of your regular patrol to come through? Uh, that, my, I generally work four days, you know, four days on, two days off, and 
90% of my shifts involve that area on patrol every night. So okay. I generally frequent there because it's one of the busier spots in the city at night. So I go where the busy stuff's at. So try to make sure there's no problems. And like I said, their staff is normally very helpful with resolving any issues that happen in or around the establishment. So, so and it seems so you brought these things to their attention um, about the lack of barriers. And I guess, in your opinion, did they address sort of all the issues that you brought up at those times with those warnings and positioning of the staff to staff so they could see people coming and going? There was adjustments, but by the time of the actual violation date, um, there wasn't sufficient. Uh, remedies for that problems that I had, had pointed out. But how about now, though? I mean, that's what you stated earlier, but they kind of complied. Correct. They, I mean, they've adjusted staffing where someone's down there. There's signs posted for no reentry. There's actually a sign I went up there last night that said um, no beverages allowed on the patio. So they're definitely making remedies to these problems. Um, now that you know, everything's been brought to light. So on that day as well, just going by the report, so it seems that June 8th, um, yeah, like 11.22, I was trying to figure out the timeline, because at 11.22, um, it looks like you came by and that um, you said there was no security staff on the patio portion of the establishment, and, and I think maybe you talked to some at that time, and then like 15 minutes later is when you got the... I had gone up there, the and I was actually just going to go around, check something out on Strong Ave itself, and then by the time I pulled out on the street, we were getting a phone call for the fight. Okay, so you essentially just yeah. went around the block, came back. This, came back, yeah, and then got the call and came back again. Okay. Do you have any other questions? I don't have any. I guess that's it. Do you have anything else to add? No, like I said, they've always very helpful, and uh, from my observations in the past week, they made remedies to fix the problems and uh, adjust staffing so that an incident like this should not happen in the near future unless something major happens. Okay, great. Okay. Um, all right, who's here to speak for Notch 8, Inc.? Thank you, officer. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nico. I'm a farm manager for uh, the deck for Notch 8 and total of the four establishments. Uh, this is my attorney, uh, Jesse Adams. I just asked him to come along if there's any other questions or concerns. Um, <clears throat> so yes, we uh, sent out a memo stating that we're not um, arguing that these things, these violations did take place. Um, we're doing everything in our power uh, to make sure that they don't happen again. Um, as you can tell, when a disturbance does happen like that, safety is our first concern for our security guards. So the alcohol going in and out is definitely a, a big concern for us, but obviously the safety of any person is going to take over that um, spot. So um, the person that came in uh, ran past the door at one o'clock. It was in there at uh, one fifteen. It was actually, from what I understand, Eric Dowd is our head of security. It was turned away at other doors um, and was actually waiting for the, the the opportunity to run past that person. Um, Officer Beaver, I guess, was standing on the deck at the time and saw it and. It, Eric was already in motion to get the person out of there. Um, but it is something that we're gonna try to work on over the winter season. Uh, we're almost to the end of this next season and we're gonna spend a lot of money to try to remedy every situation. So we shut down that lower patio until we can put stone walls and things in place. So um, that's basically what I have. I don't know if there's further questions or Um, so I'm just going through um, sort of the timing of events. With those, um, you know, Officer Beaver visited the premises two or three times in the week previous to this happening and communicated, I think, with Eric Dow during that time. I'm wondering, was were these warnings that he um, gave to Mr. Dow, was that communicated to you during that week? Um, not very well. Um, and it's something that we've talked at extensively about and I actually sent a text message to Officer Beaver that if there were any other violations or issues or concerns so please you know address me. Um, we get a game of telephone. I have nine security staff. I have 60 total staff on. Um, we have anything from a 
wedding to a huge party downstairs in the tunnel bar to you know, there's a lot of moving parts and obviously we're open 17 hours a day so I can't be there every hour um, I have two young children it's just impossible so um, so it does get lost in telephone I he talked about concerns on the lower patio we pushed a person down uh, that was standing up on the top deck that, that was stated we always want them down the lower patio um, then we further added another door person uh, into the back corner as they had talked. So how did, we had a triangle of people to make sure nobody could cross those barriers anymore. Next year, what I'd like to do, like people reaching over a barrier or something like that, is just putting a fence a little bit further out so that it would be a two-foot barrier instead of just being able to reach across. Um, it is outdoors. It's super difficult. It's not as easy as a, a wall or anything like that. Um, I would argue that not to bring other establishments in, but a lot of the other establishments in town, it's a thinner, it's a one inch barrier with a canvas that anybody could reach over. It just so happens we have a lot more police presence at our place because it's late night and those things happen. And we try to catch it as much as possible, um, but we are going to do a lot more uh, next year, like I said. I'm just not going to spend money this year on to it. And when did the deck open for the season? Um, I open any time that it's basically over 70 degrees, so we were open as early as February. Uh, we had that 180 degree day, um, but always by uh, Memorial Day to Labor Day, so crime season. So. Okay, so yeah, so semi officially, I mean, I guess it had opened maybe a week or so before. Yeah, it just it really depends on the weather. I mean, it's, if it breaks 65, basically, I open. Because I was wondering about the signs too. That it, you said that that's something that you put up seasonally, but haven't gotten around to it. And so I would guess yeah, and it really, it in all honesty, it was an oversight. We take them down. It was a you know laminated sign. So what we did is we had all brand new signs made. I think I, we just handed that to you when you came here. I'm sure if you're able to see them, but they're all um, metal, so they're they're all installed and, and not being taken down. So they'll be up year round. So so if we see one that falls or gets broken, we'll replace it as quickly as possible. And is it, um, is it an unusual thing for an officer to come and give a warning? I mean, is that something that's happened over the course of, I guess as a former business owner, I'm just wondering about the communication. Um, it seems if an officer we came a, and said, I could file a violation without giving a warning, that that's something that would be communicated to the manager immediately. Yeah, I would yeah. expect the same. Um, and I think, it, like I said, I've, I've, there's so many moving parts, especially in the summer. I'm not always standing there. It's not like me and Eric. Have a conversation. So he comes in at nine every night, and I'm maybe there three nights a week past that, you know, on the busy nights. But by the time it's nine, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, so I might be putting out a wedding or dealing with something like that. So um, sometimes I don't see an employee for two or three weeks, you know, in, in that in that situation. Um, we've always had like Officer Beavers say a great relationship with. We invite them in. We want them to come in. It gets rid of bad guys. We don't want bad people. We want a safe, healthy environment. Right. Um, so as this progressed, it progressed pretty quickly. Uh, when I got the violation, some of the stuff that was in there was the first time I've even seen it. So that's why when I got counsel, I tried to guide myself. Um, so we've we've opened a new line of communication with a Slack app where we can communicate a lot faster amongst everybody. All managers can see it. Um, we have some logs for the managers, which we always kept, but it's hard to keep enforcing that constantly. So uh, we've kind of gone back to those. We've written the new policies so that the, the people that are on the door understand the rules um, and understand that they're going to come with consequences. It's, uh, it's not OK if it's somebody that's arguing with you to let them in to close their tab. It's just they have to come back another time. Um, so. This is really the first time that we've, uh, if there was ever a, a different issue, they always come to us and talk to us and we try to resolve it as quickly as possible. And once it was, the signs were up, it was like I printed them literally minutes after. It was just, yeah. when you don't know, you can't remedy it, so. If I can just point out one, a couple of things. Uh, with respect to the communication, uh, Mr. Micker and I discussed what I was going to put in the memo. And one of the problems was that, that he wasn't getting the, the messages. And, but I didn't put that in there because we didn't want to blame staff. And also, we know that ultimately it's the responsibility of management. But that's why we discussed extensively. And he discussed with his employees himself the need to make sure 
that those messages get to him so that if there's an issue, it doesn't have to come yeah. to the point where we're here in the future. I always feel that staff, and not to knock Eric or any of my staff, they might not understand how serious these violations are. So when it comes through as one thing, and you know, I understand you know, losing a liquor license for even a day or two, what that you know, implication is, and I think that might be difficult to quantify in different roles in that business, so. Yeah, I just remember um, in my days as a business owner, every time um, I got a text that the phone rang, I knew it was something that <laughs> had to Especially do with the cafe. So <laughs> communication was almost too constant uh, yeah. in that situation. Um, yeah. yeah, I find um, with having 60 people on staff, they, they, they actually find a way not to communicate because I have two young kids, so they say, I don't want to bother them. And, Sometimes that's not the case. But it's better to just you know reach out to me. Um, yes. But yeah, anything after eleven, the phone rings. I have PTSD. So. And they all have the the rules now for extended hours, so that they have that awareness. Yeah. So the, the policy that um, I gave to you is going. Mm -hmm. in, we're reprinting the entire book. Um, so all door staff is seeing that now um, and signing, and then uh, it'll be in our new policy book. So all staff understands it because sure. it's everybody's job that works there. Yeah. It's not just the door guy. So yeah. um, I just want to make it clear. I kind of presume that everybody who works or lives frequents Northampton understands that you know nobody's allowed after one, but let's make it a policy so I can mm hold -hmm. them accountable. So. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Do you have anything else to add? Council, mm -hmm. do you have any questions for uh, the officers? I don't. I do have a couple things to add when the time comes. Um, actually, maybe I can raise it down in case my questions or what I say or makes you want to ask the officers questions. Um, with respect to two of the violations, um, the, the first one, um, no admittance of patrons shall be permitted by licensee after 1 a.m. Um, in my conversations with Mr. Dowd, uh, he explained to me that the woman who entered the premises after 1 was someone who he had um, caught twice trying to enter platform. So she, after the second time, he followed her down to the deck and watched her enter. What happened was um, she stood back by the fence, which uh, separates that retaining wall from, is by the retaining wall on the bike path in the deck. She was sitting there smoking a cigarette. She saw Mr. Bermudez's attention be distracted while Officer Beaver was talking to Ms. Cronin, and she took off in, and he immediately, uh, Mr. Dowd, um, <clears throat> noticed it, followed her, and Officer Beaver noticed it, pointed it out, and Mr. Bermudez, Officer Beaver, and Mr. Dowd also went over, went to her immediately. So, um, if, if you'd like, I can I can call Mr. Dowd up, and I can, I can ask him those questions directly. But that's a representation of the conversation that we had. But I don't. I I, I think if you heard that, you might. Um, see that I, it wasn't actually permitted. This is someone who broke the rule and, 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 and entered it in an opportunistic moment um, when staff was talking to the officer after being kicked out of the other place twice. Um, and the other thing is that <clears throat> with respect to the uh, violation of MGL 138 section 12 um, allowing beverages to be drunk off premises, based on what we heard is I suggest that this happened. The DEX um, staff responded. All of the staff that was assigned to the deck responded to the fight, which wasn't on their property. Um, so I think it's unrealistic to think that um, they wouldn't do anything but do what they're trained, which is to think safety first and respond to the fight, leaving the opportunity to, for people to um, leave with drinks. And it's reasonable to assume that people were I mean, I think we heard there were like 20 plus, maybe 30 people watching this fight. Um, but we don't have evidence, we don't have testimony from anyone specifically. We don't, we haven't heard someone say, yeah, I was drinking, for example. They're, the officer was distracted himself, and I don't, not to detract from what the officer did, but didn't have the opportunity to actually question anybody to find out whether or not they were actually drinking. Every person who was doing that was breaking the law themselves because they were drinking on public property at that point. And I don't think the deck can be responsible for that, particularly given that. It was a fight that they couldn't control. So I would ask you not to find uh, the deck in violation of the first and fourth um, violation 
but find a violation of, the, of, of two and three, and I, and I make the same penalty requests that I made in my memo. Okay. I mean, on that, um, I have just a quick question for the officers. Uh, when the gentleman was reaching over, he was smoking a cigarette, he was reaching over and grabbing his drink, was that prior to the 20 or 30 people rushing off to the deck? It was another day, day previous, correct. Oh, it was a different day altogether? Correct. Okay. All right. But then you said they remedied that right away. They took they, care they, of it. Uh, took the beverage away and told the gentleman he wasn't welcome back. So, Nachi, you guys have nothing else to add? I just, um, if, if the commission members haven't had the opportunity to read my memo, I'd be happy to go over it. Otherwise, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, if you want more refreshments, we'll that's fine. Sure, yeah, if I could. Thank you when we're here. Uh, Nache doesn't dispute that they're in violation uh, of at least two, the violations two and three, and we don't contest anything that police say. Uh, Mr. Mika has met with his employees and has reemphasized the importance of strict compliance with, uh, with all the rules, as you've heard. And they're going to be required to complete the TIPS training, uh, training for intervention procedures program. Some of them have already done that. They're all going to be doing that again, all of the uh, security staff, uh, which I think is important. As you heard, he's made changes to the employee handbook and has distributed that. Um, and he's working on the lines of communication so that there won't be any communications issues. And he's, um, he's put up a permanent sign so that there'll never be an issue of, of, um, of making the mistake of not putting up the signs and taking the, and removing them at the end of the season in the future. So I think that, that one is, is, uh, is gonna be resolved. Um, I think with, with every violation he's taken remedial measures, I think that we won't be here in the future. And I've done a, a decent amount of, of research looking at similar uh, situations, similar violations, to the extent that there are similar violations in the past issued by this commission over the past 10 years or so. And I think that um, either a, a warning or if the board finds that, the commission finds that a warning is not sufficient, uh, or one day license suspension uh, suspended for a period of two months based on all the remedial measures they've taken, the fact that they've taken full responsibility and have really done everything they can to, uh, to comply and make sure that compliance is ongoing in the future. I would ask that you consider my recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, are there any other witnesses, uh, anyone else who has anything to add? I don't want to be a nuisance. <laughs> nope. but, and I don't know if it's a question for someone here or a question for us, but I would like to have an understanding of the difference. I mean, I've seen it physically, the patio versus the deck, and understand, I mean, if the patios underneath the, the alcohol license? I mean, is that just an extension? There's of, photos here. I mean, I know I've seen it, but so so you're saying that now you've closed down that area at this point? So um, when we took over uh, five years ago, uh, that whole space was pretty, pretty beat up in the channels. There was a ton of old stonework and bushes and things all the way uh, around the deck. You couldn't even see the parking lot at that point. So when we started removing stuff and changing things, we replaced all the stone that was existing. Um, we took that front area of the deck, which was bushes, and we put in uh, a patio um, to extend the seating. We we're already growing at a pretty rapid rate and uh, with 70 extra seats, which is, as a previous business owner, you understand that's a lot of money. Um, but I never extended the liquor license because it stated in the liquor license, the out, it was the outdoor deck surface and I just went on the premise that was like right there <laughs> you know and that's not the case um, once I got the notification um, I spoke with council and we shut down um, so I'm gonna be back in front of you guys next month I hope with uh, with an extension or a hope to extend a liquor license to that space um, I know by the time all the process is done with Boston I wouldn't have that extension probably until the middle of October so for me, it's not a crazy rush because it, uh, 
a hotel, a walls and stuff built next year and just have to chalk it up as a loss for this year at this point. So um, so that's how that, that space has worked. Okay. Yeah, because it seems like a lot of the issues were referring to the patio. Yeah, yeah, and it, and it was something that was kind of a trial when we first started. We didn't even know if it was going to be any kind of substantial business down there, but we've been growing and growing, and it is, and, and it was easy to just kind of, it was there, and forget about making anything more permanent, spending more money, which obviously is another concern, but, um, but obviously, in light of all of this, we're going to do all those steps. So now, because I was up there recently, and the patio is physically there, but you're saying you want to see it. Is so we there? moved, so we used to have the band that plays on Fridays and Saturdays, um, where up on the pulp if you're walking up the deck to the right um, and so what we did is move the band down to the lower patio with no alcohol mm -hmm. um, so that we could fill that the tables so we didn't have a total loss of the 70 tables or the 70 seats and then anybody who's not drinking so if a family comes or they they're not going to drink we can at least see them down there um, so we don't lose all of the food we're just losing the, the liquor on those seats so Okay, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Officers, do you have any uh, recommendations that you'd like the commission to consider? As as they, uh... Um, the uh, recommendation of a warning is sufficient for me. Like I said, Mr. Mika and his staff has always been very gracious and helpful. Um, they've remedied everything that I've had a problem with um, with this violation. Um, I believe that's sufficient. I don't see any problems in the future. And if there is, obviously, um, his staff knows to directly communicate those so we can remedy those quicker and not have any further issues. So that warning, I believe, is sufficient um, at this time. Great. Thank you very much. I'd like to make a motion to close the violation hearing. Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. So at this time, um, we uh, deliberate what we want to do. Or what uh, issue uh, our findings. So. so it seems everything that occurred, all the actions that have been taken have been done so with a better awareness of the level of exposure and liability given the nature of the space mm -hmm. on the bike path, the other businesses in the building. Um, so I certainly appreciate the, the effort that has been put in to Absolutely. comply. Right. And um, certainly the words of Officer Beaver. And I, I can see where, you know, the bottom portion would be construed as mm -hmm. part of the area and then take over the business. So we don't recommend that. So, but it seems um, he's on the agenda for the next month. Or, or trying yeah, to be. I don't have a trying, yet. Not yet. So but at least we're taking from you heard from we're taking steps yes. for that. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, that's good. Um, um, so I understand now with the one day suspension being suspended for two months, what exactly does that mean? So if we were to imply that you know, or enforce that, that would just note that there would be um, that day of loss if there was another violation within those two months. So we'd suspend that for that two months. Um, um, had we, if we do that, I would also be inclined to allow the day picked by them being a day wedding venue and things like that, you would want to cancel some that's why. Mm -hmm. you know, so but it's a suspension that only goes into effect if there is another right, violation. Another violation. Mm -hmm. so. so theoretically there would be no loss of business because the violation would occur. That's the yes. Yes. Incentive. Yes. But I mean the that usually is opposed to kind of put the enforcement of a license commission to get them motivated to do what they seem to already done. Right. I mean, it's already gone and taken great steps to get rectified and all the violations. So, right, my inclination is to, you know, go with the MPD's recommendation. But, you know, you know, consider something more of a concern I talk about. I'm inclined to also go with the NPD's recommendation of a warning. Um, large, I mean, the efforts have been put in to remedy situations. And in the past, when we had 
an after hours violation, it's a totally different situation. It's a standing bar, whereas this is someplace where they have to sort of like whack a wall, like somebody's <laughs> running from one bar to the next. So I think, you know, as they do get busier, and they're a very popular venue, they're going to have uh, all those venues are popular. They just have to rise to the occasion and have the appropriate staffing and the appropriate physical structures well, and the appropriate adding, training. You know, from what he said, he added staff, and now they're getting more training with the tips mm -hmm. communications again, which may be redundant in some cases, but it's always good to uh, do the thing when that's on the them. So, um, I don't know. I think it's been, I noticed that signs were up a long time ago, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, yes, they are. Yeah, that's true. That's fine. <coughs> okay. So, that's something that we can discuss as well. Yeah, yeah you can so, discuss that for sure. I mean, I, I appreciate what council said about removing the first and fourth. Violations, but I, I mean it's the the setup of the businesses there mm -hmm. hasn't changed. So it's it's in terms of people coming in after one. I, I understand uh, there was somebody coming from the other establishment who'd been caught trying to do the same thing there. It's still a violation. There still has to be better better staffing, better which I think systems. that's true. yeah that's. So they're saying that's cured. That's cured. Right. However, I still think that is is a violation. Of, of course. course. I mean, if it, yeah. if, it, if it truly happened, it happened right. it's a violation. I, I get that. Those are the rules they violated. Yep. So I understand that. So we're in agreement then that number one, or city number two, who wrote amendments and patrons, mm -hmm. is a, a true violation, whether or not the guy was chasing down after or not. Right. I mean, it, it's, you know, it's a catch-22. I, I come from that business, too. Um, I was a doorman for many years, and a bartender. And, I mean, just like you know, Officer Beaver said, trying to control 20 or 30 people, yeah. how do you do it? Yeah. You know, even with 15 staff coming down after, you can. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. I mean, uh, if you want to call it, um, you know, cut and dry. Right. Action, then, yeah, that's fine. So. to 
violations two three is it two three six and then uh, the mass general law. So Northampton rules, right? Um, were indeed violated, um, but it is our recommendation. Um, not a recommendation. We're going to actually issue a warning uh, by the rec recommendation of uh, Northampton Police Department going with them. And so I guess that's all I need to do. So I'll yeah, I just did the second. I'll second the motion. Yeah. We're not. We're no. just issuing a warning. There's no suspension. There's no uh, days of loss or anything. Um, so go ahead and I'll second. second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, do you guys understand? <coughs> yeah, so we told him. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. So I the water. Yeah. So you understand, what, um, <coughs> you know, the decision that the board came to. Uh, we went with the recommendation of uh, MPD. Appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, the board appreciates your efforts and uh, that you've taken. And uh, uh, a, written, a written decision will be sent out, certified mail, uh, to the licensee and the ABCC within three business days. So, other than that, it's good. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you officers. Appreciate it. sidewalk space out there but yeah. if somebody wanted to take their drink and take off they could easily do it and there's no one there 
to stop it. There's no one. There's just wait staff. Yeah. Um, but the Greek restaurant has no liquor license. Right. And it's BYOB. So oh, I personally witnessed families opening their own bottles of wine on the sidewalk. At the right, table. which is not allowed. Totally to be illegal. Yeah. That, violation. Sorry, excuse me. That is considered, yeah, drinking. That's a arrestable. Yes, yeah, city ordinance. Yeah, right. that's yeah. right. So that's an arrestable Staff offense. So I think with that, we need to send from the license commission a certified letter, correct? Telling them that that is no longer allowed. If you, I don't understand. Are there no, are there no wine and malt licenses? You know, like annual. There's are, seasonal wine and malts that they can apply, and after six months of good operation, they can apply to convert to an annual. Then I would just tell them, if, you know, that it's come to light, and maybe if they would, you know, if they want to be out there on that sidewalk, they can come before us with a seasonal and uh, take it to that. So I understand if they're drinking it inside the establishment, it is. I mean, you can be okay as long as the staff don't touch it. Right, and as long as they do all the handling by themselves. Right, but as soon as you're outside, do they have a license for, or I mean, do they have seating? Do they have designated seating outside, or are they just putting tables and chairs outside? Yeah, they're coming to cover the sidewalk. I guess we have to look at In order to get to to have seating on the sidewalk, you have to go through the DPW yeah. and get an outdoor tables and chairs permit. They have to send an engineer down there to measure and make sure everything's ADA compliant. So, so is the question, do they have that? Or is the question, even if you have that, can you BYOB? When they can still so No matter what, you can. No matter what, yeah. because you're drinking on an unlicensed premise yeah. on city property. Okay. So should we yeah. CC this letter to the engineer or the town offices that also need to go down and inspect that for the seating well, or at least check that i can but call the dpw and yeah. see if they have a tables and chairs permit i okay. only get notified if they have a tables and chairs permit if they have a liquor license too okay. right. yeah do i'm not sure i remember when they put the tables out mm -hmm. and they drilled into the sidewalk to put in their barrier oh. and at the time the dpw is not aware of that because they're not allowed, you, can, you know, even if you have your yeah. tables and chair permit, you can't drill into the city sidewalks. Yeah, that's why Mama Guanas is self-standing. Right, right. So, yes. Um, yeah. But further, um, so Viva, is that what it's called? The next yeah. one down? Yeah, Viva Fresh on the corner. A couple of, um, two tables outside, and post with a chain, mm -hmm. you know, bust the chain on the other one, so compliant or not. Um, Sam's, I think, uses the same. Yeah. Um, Gene. Moshi Moshi down below. Yeah. Nothing. Um, moshi Moshi down moshi here. Moshi Moshi, yeah. Just tables out there that are locked up so anybody can come and go as they please. There's no real delineation. I've seen fencing there because it's a big fence, and I thought, oh, look at that. Yeah, so right. all of them were locked up. Now, Spoleto's has got all kinds of different. Right, Spoleto does, so yeah. Across the street, Toasted Owl. Two Red Bull tables. This is La Vera Cruzada that we just approved. There's nothing. There's nothing yeah. there. Just so, so is um, it um, then, given everything that Brian's bringing up, there's sort of systemic misunderstanding of what is required for people to be on the sidewalk. Is it? Does it make sense to send a letter to every establishment that holds one of these licenses to remind them of the protocol and say, please review, we're going to be doing it. I mean, it's not it's not under our purview to do official checks, but we could ask the police, the police officers to do an yes. official check. Yeah. And, you know, I think if we just issue, you know, the, the two warnings that we just, um, or the, the two violations that we just decided were in a black and white world, actual violations. Right. The same thing could be occurring elsewhere. Um, See, the thing that hurts on that, when you send that to the ABCC that they did violate, they don't care about extenuating circumstances. Right. You know what I mean? So but you know, but there's always going to be extenuating circumstances. I know. There, there is. Right? Yeah. There is. Yeah. And this isn't a new business, and the, the no, popularity right. of that area isn't new, and mm -hmm. I think. And he can have up to 700 people on a Friday night. Yeah, you know, it's crazy. It's madness, but they have to, they they have to yeah. elevate. Their, the you know the staffing and the right. training mm -hmm. to enforce these things so that they don't have a much worse problem. Exactly. Right. 
can I say one more about uh, Roberto's is they extended, they didn't extend it officially, but they moved. Um, they gave up those parking they spots. They gave up those two parking spots oh, outside, sure. and they're serving on those parking spots. Did you see that? And they put, oh, like, they did, there. they do have, like, a little bit. You could still slip through because they're trees, right. but I think it, that I sent a letter to um, these guys about reminding them what was licensed. I think it's only fair to do the same with Roberto's. Mm -hmm. I think it's only fair to do it with everybody. Not only that, well, that's it. I'm just saying that's why yeah. I'm trying to bring it to our attention. That no, I think we need a review of everybody. Yeah, but so oh. there's a couple different things. There's some things that people are extending a patio right, and some tables yeah. and, and a liquor license doesn't actually cover those right. things, right? That's right. Sort of one thing. And then the second thing is if they do have licensed outdoor seating, there are certain, there's certain measures that have to be taken to make sure that no one's then walking out onto the street with an open bottle. Well, which, 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 how, like, Vera Cruzana, does that mean someone's supposed to be standing Well, there? this is my point. So well, now what you, you do... Those front tables? I don't know how you, you actually... You know, I run a yeah, business, and I, my or biggest complaint... Or at least doesn't have some kind of barricade. My biggest complaint is if I had to, <laughs> to comply... I mean, we have to comply with the laws, but... I mean, what are we gonna do? Like, oh, you have to have outdoor security. Right. You know what I mean? So it's not really yeah. fair to say that we do it over there, right. and then you don't do it. You know, Cone Vino is uh, the whole. Right. Whip. Although, although I would argue that the deck is an outdoor drinking establishment. I mean, that's like their whole purpose, right? Yeah. <laughs> the most yeah, part, yeah so the reason like they, they have, have security, security is be because they're open until two a.m. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because right. That's part They're required of the law. It's not so, required if you're open only until one. Right. Now this brings this. I I couldn't. I didn't feel like I could bring this up during the violation hearing because it would. It has, one has nothing to do with the other, but it does. So you go to local burger. They have a full liquor license. It says in our rules that you're not allowed to let anybody in the establishment after one a.m. And if you have it until two, then you stop serving at one forty. They're open till 3 a.m. People come and go as they please. I don't even know they have a liquor license. That is not a liquor license. That is, is yeah, they just well, I think they got full liquor. It's one of the special legislation. So, I mean, that's a violation. So, I think, uh, yeah. So, if you want, I mean, I, it, that's fine. Stay up until 5 a.m., but have a walk up window. Get your hamburger and your fries that way outside on the sidewalk. There's something I don't know. I'm not telling them how to run their business, but I am going to say that if we hold, you know, local eight or whatever he's called, uh, notch, notch eight. eight to uh, the wire, we have to do that with everyone else. You know, I mean. Well, uh, I don't how. disagree with you at all. I think it has to be fair across the board. Right. I think there are some cases where establishments just don't have the full scope of information. But I wonder, in that case, with local burgers, so they're they're serving food until 3 a.m. Their kitchen is open. Understood. So where then? Same premise. The premise just is the same. So you, their bar is there, but it's closed. Um, yeah, I, had, I, I had a thought about that. But, um, How do they, so they have a full liquor license. But then I guess technically they have to stop serving alcoholic beverages at 2040. Is that? Well, how do they get to stay open? Because how the they... rule states that the people until 2 have to be off premises by yeah. 145, or no, I'm sorry, by 12, by 240. They have to be gone by 240, closed and gone. So that gives them 40 minutes to cash out. Yeah, so yeah. they do. So well, yeah, I mean, yeah, patrons by two and then staff by 245. Right. The thing is, I've gone through every single one of these files. Not one of them has these rules signed right. in well, their files. Right. So maybe that's our first order. I think we need to start they're... from the bottom. And make sure that everybody has this information. But what, you know, before we have some homework to do, before I think we can even do that because right. of that item that 
would pertain to local burger or someplace like that. How do, you, how do we then handle that? Because local is going to be reading that and say, well, we're open until three. Well, what I, the, the reason I'm bringing this up is the city opens itself through us to liability. Absolutely. For that. I mean, yep. He has every right to bring suit because if you figure that out it's himself, you know, you'd be like, wait, you're violating me. But yeah, this is also so a violation. I, I, I think uh, that's, I think. You know, I don't want to see the city be sued. Not saying he would, but anybody has the right to do that. So we have to correct it. So it seems oh, yeah. across the board. Yeah. As it comes, but I think also out of fairness, that was the violation that was brought to us, that was witnessed by the police, not just on one night, but there were several nights of things that were witnessed. And whether whether it's a gray violation of somebody trying to get into one bar and then running into the other with security chasing her, it's still right. there's still something happening. So I don't really see, you know, if there are things that are unknown to us, I don't well, see how the city could get I'll tell you how my thought process came now. about. Mm -hmm. You know, my thought process was this. So a couple of years back, we had a violation with bishops. Two people in the winter, and I don't know if it was January, February, or, or whatnot. They had coats on, and they snuck drink, drinks past security mm -hmm. and out onto the street. And the officers witnessed the people and take the drinks out of their coats, and they started to drink them. Okay, so you heard it today, an arrestable offense. Yeah. So they violated Bishop's Lounge for that, but didn't levy any such violation to the two people that actually broke the law. Right. So I know the law is also, we don't have the right as a dormant or security to pat you down. We can ask you to open your coat and, and look and things like that, but I don't think that they can actually. So, and then in that violation, I even stated, you can find in the minutes, that I'll get by you nine times out of 10 with alcohol on my, on my person. You can't stop me. So how do you hold, so I let it, we came as a board and we let them off the hook because the officers admitted that they didn't arrest and they didn't issue citations. So how can you actually bring a violation to the, you know, the restaurant, the establishment? So that was my process. And then I started thinking about it. I'm like, wow, you know, alcohol, how easy is it to get out? So I started looking at all the other restaurants. It was like back there or something. I mm -hmm. sales, so I took the girls down and I did my, <laughs> my thing. But I just started taking notes on all of them because what else am I going to do, you know? <laughs> And that's how I came about doing this, so I'm figuring all this out. Yeah, I mean, I think it's important. Mm -hmm. So, and with the local burger, so they obviously, they were previous to getting their license, like the license they had been approved to stay until three, which I'm assuming there's some kind of approval just for food to a certain hour. Is there some kind of oh, process? And that's another thing. Yeah, it's a question. And too, then right? I don't know when they got their liquor license, but technically at that point they should have been notified if you get your liquor license. Right, yeah, so, right. So I'm sure they don't that long ago. Yeah. And I'd say 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, a lot of other people don't too because yes. sure. why do we have these with a name and a date and a title if they're yes. not in the files? Yeah. Yeah, they should be in the files. Mm -hmm. A couple of students had a conversation before where someone didn't want to do so much work. So. <laughs> yeah. You know, but anyway, that's the new business that I brought up. And so, well, what else do we want to do about it? Other than, I mean, do we need to kind of carefully look at every single establishment now? I mean, it's going to be a daunting task, and I hate to do that, you know, for yeah. you too. But it's not up to me, but I think that this should go to every establishment that's approved for 2 a.m. Right. closing time. And then I think... Or that should go to every establishment that has a liquor license. Well, this is just for extended hours. Oh, okay. Yeah. So should we make another one that's actually our our rules MPD for just everyone that has? Okay. That's a, this is they have a different really one saying. than us. And when yeah. I so sent your subpoenas in our office, I sent them an updated one of ours yeah. to try and maybe tell them that this is the one we actually use. Right. So that was the confusion because so. Jesse was referring to. Oh. Mr. Adams was referring right to these numbers, one I think, because I didn't know, yes. I wanted to say, what are you talking about, one four? Oh. I think he's looking at the MPD list. He was. Probably. Yeah. The other list, so now. 
<laughs> That's why I kept saying one and four. <laughs> yeah, just right. What he said. Four was an action and there is three, I guess, one and so one, two, and three. Yeah, one, two, and three. Well, oh, that's actually, three so number four, oh. were there people there later than 2 a.m.? Yeah. No. So that wasn't. This doesn't apply. apply. Yeah, but so we weren't talking. We were looking at, at where point. two, three, and six are circled. Yeah. yeah. We were looking at this one. Oh, so, so he thinks that's what he thinks? Well, that's what I'm concerned about, that well, let he's saying we weren't. Can you follow up with him? I will I will make sure that in the letter I send tomorrow, it's clear what we violated him on. Right. But also the thing is, <clears throat> in the, um, the letter I sent to Jeremiah, the one you guys have, it states the... Um, it states the violation. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty clear. Yeah. And it was on the agenda. Right. So I do think it has oh, a point of clarification. I will though. definitely okay. make sure that I think clear. Jesse Adams was going off with the police. Oh, or he was going off of this. Oh, his, his own memo. letter. His own memo. His violations. Oh, you're and right. He, he was. Yeah, he was. He was referring okay. to his memo. So That's there's no confusion. Oh, his memo is reflects. So oh, he's, okay. he's, he's showing four violations, which is very much is interesting. But I think right. he divided one into two. All right. Oh, during an altercation. But so again, what are the true violations then? So as far as they're concerned, what we said doesn't really matter yet until it's in black and white. So when we send that letter to them, you know, certified, showing the violations. These are the violations. Yeah, so no admins. Um, after you know, one. Yeah, no admins yeah. after one, not having signs, and then, and then the security staff. So can some, so here's a consumption of alcohol off of the deck premises during an altercation is not anything that we found that a violation of. We didn't, so, so the person reaching over, all no. those things, that yeah. wasn't a violation. No, he didn't it's request a, yeah. that. Yeah. The yeah. police officer didn't request that. That right. was like the day previous. He mentioned it, I think, just for like context. Right. The officer. Right. Although, yeah, so it's interesting that their counsel so, included it as a violation. You know, which, but which we number did it. So hit in, in Jesse's and Council Adams um, <laughs> letter, he says number four is he said these are the violations. Yeah. Oh, and he well, said consumption of alcohol off of the deck premises during an altercation. That's the one that there was a fight right. and then everyone went out there with their drinks and were basically drinking off premises. Right, right but we didn't so, we are only working with these violations. So, you know, you look at number six here. There's four violations, though. Right, except there's three that we just referred to. Right. We. What do you mean? So, so these, these, this packet that we have, right. these three circled violations. Those are the three from there. And yep. then there's one, which is Master of Law, which is okay. on the next page, section 12. Right, but that's not... So, and you're, I'm getting lost with all the letters. So violation one, okay, so when I go through with the police departments, violation one is, oh, is off-premise. Yeah, that's true, off-premise drinking, I think. Violation two is after hours, the person running in after hours. And violation three is no signs, and in fact, I don't know if they, okay, failure to maintain staff, allowing patrons to enter after so, one. No signs and consumption of alcohol off premise. If you'll remember the rule, if you'll remember number Which six. Which is what the officer asked for. Right. It is those four. Number six, they had a they had a person there. She snuck by. And the other security person was coming. So it says that they should um Well, it says number one on this with the officer's report is failure to maintain staff at all entry and exit points by not having monitoring people's access to the patio portion of the deck. But is that general language? Because they're saying there was a guy at that entrance and she waited for the opportune moment and snuck by him when he turned his back. Right. But the other person coming from the other bar. Well, that, that's his number two, which is well, a long he didn't just have to the establishment. What the, what the police officer's narrative, it wasn't just, it wasn't like the guy turned his back and she took the opportunity and ran in. They observed that the staff was socializing. 
Oh, yeah. So that's a little different. Yeah, yeah that's a, I, yes. Because during it, he's saying uh, uh, when he turned his back for a second, but he actually watched this woman walk in. Right. Oh, he made okay. there was there was so, some. So you know, just it is what it is. We it is, it like yeah. it is. So we found violations. We gave up. But we need warning. to clear that we did, even though I, I don't know what the wording was that, but that we're saying all four were valid violations, which yeah. includes people consuming alcohol on premises. Yeah. Yes, I Those think I'm pretty sure that's what you guys said. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's just there was confusion on our part because we have these three. Well, in the circle. Yes. Right. And there was a, there was a point. I was trying to make the point and the difference between you want to keep it with black and white. Here's a rule: you broke it because 30 yep. people rushed off. Even right. the, even the police presence could not handle 30 people rushing. But if you follow the black and white, right. it's a rule violation. Yeah. It, and plus, there's the aspect of, and this, I don't, you know, wasn't part of the overall overarching discussion, but the aspect that the patio is an illegal place to serve. So, people drinking off premise, they were doing that at tables on the patio anyway. So, and the fact that they weren't aware that they didn't have, they needed additional an additional application for that space. Is okay, there a so that's a great point. So now, do we go ahead and violate local burger? Because the fact is that he's not aware it doesn't matter. The rules are the rules. This is what you just basically said. So now we go ahead and say, hey, we found that you're in violation. No, I'm talking about the... the, the I understand what you're... I know that. But I'm trying to say... You get what my point is? I get what your point. I do. And so I just feel, from a liability standpoint and just a moral ground, I feel like I'm wrong in, in enforcing a rule on one person or you know that owns a business and not... But our yeah. role <clears throat> is we aren't enforcers. We can't go out and find problems. What we can do is have a really thorough, solid understanding of the rules that are before us and apply them when people come to us. I think it's completely reasonable to do like a full scrubbing and make sure that every establishment has the information that they need. Um, Quite frankly, I don't know how you could not know that when you're extending your space that you need additional coverage for that if you have a liquor license which has a literal map on it. If you took a minute and read it, it says deck, like wooden structure, does it not? Mm -hmm. Right. So it really so, literally says that. And then the one from Mama Guanas does say concrete, you know, sidewalk area. Right. Yeah. So I'm giving him the benefit, the benefit of doubt by saying he didn't know. No, true. Yeah, by going off the I got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah. He, he admitted it. Well, yeah. just the same we're back to not only are you, you like Roberto's, more in compliance. Now, when I built a building, the city made me have so many parking spots for right. people that are in the building. Yeah. So now, not only are they violating, and they, they might be violating the fact that they took a handicap spot yeah. out of there. So yeah. the state, or I mean, the city may come back once we bring this to light with DPW and everything that. They're going to say, uh huh, with those two spots, safe spots. If it was in there, you know, it's a whole different venue. It's, it's not covered under us, but you have to go before the board or zoning board or whatnot. You know what I mean? When you mm -hmm. build a new building, and you have to submit plans on this is how many parking spots I have. There's public parking all around, and then I have these two. So, but if they did it on their own accord and they weren't made by the um, city, then they're not in any violation of that with the parking spots. But where we're concerned, they're in violation because that the, those parking spots they didn't come in before us and say hey we're going to extend this to the end so so there's two that we know of and two different types of violations but we can't do anything about it unless we send the police and PD to do a, a check. Well, yeah, we get, like we did for Jeremiah, we can send a letter and it was a friendly letter. I gave you guys a copy. Yeah, it was. Right. Um, I'm just reminding you what is on your liquor license. Um, like the description and just say if you if you'd like to make an application to extend your premise and then in that that way I mean I, I did that to Jeremiah and he came back and he said and he just said what do I need to do yeah right. so I think yeah. I don't know it's up to you guys but well I think we should actually have you send those letters out and I think the ones that are um, open extended hours that needs to be included but I think we also need to make sure that ours match the PD or vice versa yeah 
operations. So that they're all checking. I mean, they're an agent of us, of our commission. They're right. supposed to be checking according to our rules, but their rules are the same as ours. Yep, right. You know? okay. So yep. that's the first thing that needs to be straightened out. Definitely. And then a notification, a friendly notification to the um, all the establishments, really. Just and to remind themselves to be compliant. I mean, of right. compliance. Like, avail yourselves of the information if you don't. So remind me of the rule, and I know I should know every single law and rule, but I don't, but the liquor license is being posted. Are they supposed to be posted where you can walk up and, and legibly read them? I thought so. If you have a common picture of their license, it's the same thing. It has so to be posted. It has to be posted in a conspicuous place on the premises. Okay, so the one that I went into, is it Viva? No, Sam, Sam. Anyway, one of those is behind the bar, and you can't, I mean, here, this is as close as you can get. Can you read yeah. that? I mean, but I, you know, I, I mean, mean and it's down I have below. to say mine in the cafe were up there, just as so you can see it, it was on liquor licenses, but this, it, it was the same thing. It must be in a conspicuous location. I feel like right. if you can see the yeah. license. Yeah, that's, I don't think you have to. Anywhere. It doesn't need to be, because if I wanted yeah. to go and read that, I mean, right. what right do I have to say, hey, I'd like to, I mean, I'd go to you and say, hey, can I pull that license? Can I get a copy? But I think, yeah. you could, but you could see that they have a liquor license. Of course. Right? I mean, that, I no, no, no. I yeah, all I wanted to check when I was there was, yeah. does it mention the outside seat? Oh. I wanted to make sure. That's kind of what my, oh. you know, because. Oh, so email me or text me. No, 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 I know. Yeah, I'm just yeah, saying with my walk around, I was trying to do that. And, you know, just, yeah. you know, whereas yeah. at the top of the stairs where you go to the bathroom in. Um, no, they go on a, I it's it's right there. there. Yeah. yeah, so you can read that. There's um, a general, I think it's 
but in my thought process, that's where I was headed, but it doesn't look like it's yeah. a concern because we violated items two, three, and six on right. our. I think there was confusion because we didn't know this one, two, three, four that he was referring to. Right. Because there were sort of three different documents. There was his letter, there was a letter he wrote, and then there yes, was. Yes, that's what and I'm then we had this. With numbers. Yeah, this circle of red. red. No, I know you did a great job. Um, yeah. So. So, which means, so what does that mean? Because we don't. So I think I think it's a wash. Yeah. We've already made a motion, so once you bring everyone back here, <laughs> right. so we're saying just that's <laughs> in violation of these three, and, yeah. and we we're not saying whether they were or were not in violation. Right, and I'm yeah, <laughs> and I'm okay with that. I mean, yeah. how they couldn't have controlled thirty people running yeah. into the parking lot pie classes. I think that looks I huge that uh, not put anything. If, if it was on the agenda, it needs yeah. to be voted on. Yeah, so then we voted that it wasn't a violation, right? We did. In front of that, with a motion. Right. I don't know. Hmm. What are you saying? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But I mean, you didn't seem not to have voted on it. Actually. <clears throat> oh, so we are not only supposed to just say yes, we, we found you in violation of you know two, four, and six or whatever, and NGO. You, know, you, you have to vote on the fact that. What so is isn't that what the motion is? And then we voted on the motion. The issue that the yeah, other four left. violations before us, and we needed to vote on all four. And, and I think we did that. Three, right, the first three. I think we voted that all violations occur that are written are in violation. We find that they are in violation. I thought that's how our. That well, was what I said first. Was maybe I didn't I write it motion. down. I can't. Yeah, but when we were discussing it, right? I made it as it was vague and covered all, yeah. all violations as presented to the license commission right. as a violation. Is what I pretty okay. much said. So, I guess the tape so they are covered as violations. So. Okay, I mean, I, I, just, I don't have to write the minutes until I get the um, court stenographer has all that. She oh, has sure. exactly. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. So there you okay. Go. Um, yeah, perfect. That's a good thought. Um, so let, let's talk about it. Are we done kind of with this new business on what we need to do? Yes, there is one other establishment that you were um, possibly talking about, right? That means it might be a, a person. Oh yeah, should I bring it up? I don't know, why not? I mean, we are the commission. Um, we should hear about it. Just there was, I got a phone call this morning from a woman. Um, she wanted to report a violation of the downtown business. Um, didn't know if I could take that, so I had to call her back. And um, I told her that she could put in detail, like time, place, date, location. I can share it with the commissioners, and I could also share it with the police department and have them up their compliance check. Um, she said that there was a lot of overserving. Um, there was a harassment that involved the overserving, which she has made a police report on. And I guess there was an instance where. She was with a friend there late into the night, and he overserved her and wouldn't let them call an Uber or leave. Um, the bartender? I don't know if it was the bartender, or I don't know who it was. I didn't ask questions. I didn't really want to know. I kind of just wanted it all in writing, and just to give it to you guys, I didn't want to ask questions. When you receive that in writing, and maybe even if you don't, can you just go ahead and uh, request MPD to do a check? Yeah. I mean, we can do that with anybody anytime. So. Yeah. Yeah. I gave um, her my email. Then. That was this was she called <coughs> me at like eight thirty four this morning. Did it happen last night? I don't know. I, again, I didn't ask questions. I gave her my email and I told her to send me everything. I haven't gotten anything yet, so hopefully. I'm so she didn't tell you establishment or anything. She, she did. Oh, okay. um, That's what I think. Obviously, they can't. They hold one of our licenses. So. The foundry. Parking ticket. The other room. So uh, the first go straight out there, take a left, and then your first right. Thanks. Thank oh, so, um, so that being said, I also today's Wednesday. I don't know. I guess I don't know Thursday. So right, what's the best time for a compliance check? You know, like late on a weekend.
weekend, like a Friday, Friday or Saturday night. If I can order them to do that, I would, or ask them if that order. But is that, I mean, do you do that after someone's given you a phone call and then not follow up? You can up, do it for any reason. Follow it up with any? You can take Oh, yeah, we can order, we can ask the compliance checks. Okay. They do it normally on their own, but if there's any concerns and we feel like we can always put a request in. That's what I was told by the past um, chair and some other people in Elaine Riel was a um, lawyer as well. Yeah, I, I know you can ask them for compliance checks at any time. I didn't know if there needed to be something concrete in writing. But no, 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 there isn't. It's just any reason, any time. You can just say, hey, can you please check out this establishment? Right. Well, so. we did that with the visa tapas last year without right. anything. So. Right. Yeah, that's another. So does that fall under another? Uh, with the that was the like I mean, we the, keep the then to the fact that they're running wrong. Well, based on the minutes from the commission meeting where it was approved, they're running by a hair. Okay, you know, there's nothing that we can do if their if their paperwork isn't in order, their manager on record, those types of things, which I suspect aren't together. Why don't we have them do a compliance check on that too for management on record and all of it? And then just stop in again. Why not? I mean, these guys are bored doing their shift anyway. They need something. <laughs> so a compliance check for what? For what? Just, like just, just to check. Just to make sure that, the, you know, can you also do uh, a visa or whatever you want to call it? I mean, I don't know. Homestead. You, homestead, is that what it's called? So is it a compliance check? The issue there is just that they're running, they didn't have to. They have a non-transferable liquor license that's right, and really been they're transferred twice. Right. So, they're keeping is that the legal a, name above. So what would a compliance check by the place the manager. look into? Manager so on duty information. Manager on duty information. Things yeah. like that. Their log, they, they actually get to be the log. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. But, you know, for the most part, we're really nice days of the board, so we're very polite. So. Well, for us to be doing this now, it's not at the time. Time. It's not out of our jurisdiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're so just yeah, good. Yeah, it's yeah. good because yeah. maybe people think that it's... Ask Chris, I don't know if I can send them to you. So that they can get away with these. Well, you saw the letter from, if you're interested, you know, the uh, council. <laughs> um, basically said, I've reviewed... They, you guys at the time, are, you know, Juan Rios... What I took that as is you guys are, visa. you know, pretty light. He, he had the one who did it. Right. You know, with suspensions and things like that. So... And then... So, so one day suspension, you know, kept the LLC pretty much put off for two months or six months purpose? or whatever. I mean, so it was pretty gray. It was like, how involved is he? He really Except for one of really well, serious violations, which but somehow the LLC is what you're talking about the foundry. Mm -hmm. I view that so, as pretty serious. Yeah, yeah I do too. Yeah. A lot of stuff is kind of dropped when she told me that. Yeah, I'm not going to say that. Yeah, you know, like the liquor store that was served all the college kids back in the U.S., shut them down for two months so if you do it again we're taking your license period yeah so and that's a standing order yeah. so i think that was within two years so that's another thing that the police does every now and again they'll go around and see if they can set places up i forgot what the typical name stay. Is. it's a sting or whatever but they send in underage drinkers to is that the police department or is that the um oh there's also that there's a coalition that does coalition. it yeah <coughs> that does that, but they do it with PD. So yep. they haven't done that in a while, or at least they uh, haven't. Uh, yeah, the last one them. was June 30th, 16. There was one, two, three, four, five. So who's in charge of that coalition? I mean, well, I thought it was PD. I know, but they're in. Maybe the Prevention Coalition, Spiffy. Um, yeah, it's something. I don't know. Um, they can certainly do that again. Does anybody want this? It's a list of all violations that have happened. I've seen it. Okay. I don't know if you care. Sure. You want it? Yeah. It's a light reading. Yeah. It works in a shop on it. Okay. Can we just make sure that I have what I need to do for you today? So you're going you're gonna to go ahead and send out a friendly, hey, are you compliant letter? To. Thing. Awesome. I mean, should we do it across the board? I, I see no reason to not do it across the board. Yeah. So, so as you look at this, it's okay. 
Well, because some of the issues are the 2 a.m. rules, but some of yeah. them are the alteration of premises, like Roberto's and La Vera Cruzana. So, I mean, I guess I could make a letter that and plug in at like, you let me remind you, this is your alterations, of this, or this is your premise. This is your premises, and this is, I could I so figure it out. I think you maybe to just do one generic one, so it's not a bunch of work for each individual. I'm not really worried about the work. I, I just want to make sure it's... You can cover it and make them actually do... Like, if you set it up and go, hey, we're concerned about A and B, let that person as a business owner get that letter and go, oh, my God, i got to check everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So okay. if you do the generic that covers all, say some of these following rules may, not, may or may not apply to you, depending on what your license says, but please review mm -hmm. your, your license and the rules that are make sure they're adhered to. When an establishment like La Vera Cruzana goes to BBW for, for, for a chair, table and chair permit, does, there's no cross connection between the DPW and the Liquor License Commission in your office in terms of then needing to put up a delineating barrier. So they went and got, assuming they have a permit for their tables outside from DPW, so they did that. Is the DBW telling them, okay, you can't have alcohol out there without going to the liquor license first? How does that work? That's a good question. I don't know. Because it's... Didn't they... I thought when they came to us, we had a map that included the outdoor seating. And we did. We, and the only reason that I got a copy of the outdoor seating was Sunya, who applied for it. She said, I need to apply for an alterations. And I told her, you need to get an outdoor tables and chairs permit. And then... I, it all kind of happened at once, so mm -hmm. I stayed on top of it. I guess the DPW doesn't even I don't think send, they do. and they don't even send me information when there's an outdoor tables and chairs yeah. permit that's signed off on. Yeah, um, it's kind of. It's, well, maybe should we establish that? Yeah, yeah that I mean, it's, there are lots of times where permits are issued by like the entertainment per, outdoor entertainment permits downtown for busking. Those are issued by the DPW, but if it, if sidewalk sales happens and the entity that runs sidewalk sales has a blanket permit that that this DPW is not aware of, so when people are coming in for permits for DPW, they're issuing them even though there's already a blanket permit for certain right. weekends. So there's no communication. So should we try to establish that when anything is open for sidewalk seating, that you when you grant the permit, please notify us? Yeah, I think it's okay. important enough. Yeah. I mean, we shouldn't have to do that homework ourselves. Right. It's no. as simple as, by the way, send it off as a CC to. Uh, and maybe it should be part of, in it's order for the issue, be, in order for the permit to be issued by the DPW to the establishment, just like you have to have your checklist of items from people before you issue that permit, maybe the DPW has to have the checklist of, you know, sort of like, so we're working together yes. to get the permitting for both at the same time instead of one, and then, okay, now you go get the other. On their permit, there is something at the bottom that says, has the License Commission been contacted for an alterations of permits? Okay, well, let's continue. But that If no one in their office then, follows it up, then... Exactly, that and then also that, does, that still doesn't make the DPW send down that permit to me. Right, right. right. Yeah, so... Yeah, that's just a self-reported like, sure. Because even yeah. if they don't have a liquor right. license... Sure, I can just Oh, they still need it that they still need that permit and they still have a license with the city. They still have some sort of license. They either have a common vic, which everyone pretty much has, or entertainment or something, a car dealer, something. Right. Well, fall's coming, so it's like back to school time right. for everybody. We get it all in this sort of clean get everybody on the same page mm -hmm. with the information that they've been given. Maybe take another look at the license commission's rules and regulations, yeah. not just the 2 a.m., but our rules in, yes. in general. So maybe put that on as in business or on the agenda next time, and right. we can actually go through. Yep. If we need a new rule, we can talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, that would be helpful. That would be helpful. <laughs> okay, so this is going to every establishment with 2 a.m. Correct. And then a letter to. I think the general rules, like there almost should be two of them then, if that's what you want to do. There should be one that applies to, like you said, everybody at 2 a.m., but then also the other one that are the general rules. 
But that's why I think if you put an asterisk somewhere and say some of these rules are, you know, won't apply if you don't have a 2 a.m. license, and then it's, it's simpler. It's one form, one letter that goes out to everybody, and they all sign it and return it. So if they don't, if they're not open until 2 a.m., what are they signing? Well, aren't some of these rules? Is every one of these rules pertain to 2 a.m.? Every one of them. Okay. Well, where are the other rules then? Because I was under the impression that we had, a, you know, the. This was, some right. of these were general, they covered, you have a full liquor license, these are your rules, premise, blah, 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 blah whatever. We do have a set of those, that okay. is not this. Oh, okay. Those are just 2 a.m. So then you're gonna have to, so I guess you're sending the other one back out to everybody, right? And That's is that, what we kind of established. Should I yeah. send it out before we take a look at them and amend them, because some of them. All right, so let's do that, that's a good point. We're yeah. setting out rules and we amend them after that a month later. <laughs> right. that, that, that just seems silly. But in stuff. the meantime, I think I should send a friendly, well, not yeah. to me, but I think a yeah. friendly letter should go to. We agreed on that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. to who? Cool. Yes. Well, the people that are with their premise. I mean, that friendly letter should go probably citywide to everyone about reminding them about, you know, their premises and things like that. Don't you agree? I, I think that if someone got that letter and they're in compliance, they're, they're confused. Like, well, why? well, then why are they sending this letter to well, me? Well, no. So what you're saying is we don't have the right to go around and look for violations. <laughs> and yeah, so yeah. how do we know who to send the letter to? Well, it know. has to be generic. But well, we know there's... There's a couple, but we're not. We haven't looked at every single one. In other words, to do that properly, you have to kind of do what I did, but you have to go in every one with, you know, have every liquor license on a folder, you look at it, you read it, you know, I mean, and you go to specific site visits and make sure they're, they comply. I mean, to do that right, right or wrong. Yeah. And how psyched would you be if we showed up at the license commission going through your, you'd be like, well, the it. department came every six months. Yeah, so. <laughs> you know, so, it seems like the license. But also I sat went to Jeremiah, so, <laughs> well, I guess the police department act was requesting Yeah, because we have, so we've talked about three different things going on. One is BYOB being served uh, outside, which, you know, and, and on top of that, they may not even have outdoor seating. So that's one thing. And then the other is if you have a liquor license, and even if it covers outdoor seating, what are we saying? Here, here's what you're supposed to follow. Are we saying, no, that's only the 2 a.m. I'm so confused. Like, I, I don't know how you can no, Even the ones that are not open until 2, if they have outdoor seating, yeah. I mean, are they what's their going on? Standing out there? I mean, yeah. this is what's so vague about the point. And I get that you have the 2 a.m. people with security, but if you have a, um, how do you, is it Mushi or Moshi? I mean, Moshi, Moshi. But they sometimes close, where if they're not busy, they'll close at 6 o'clock and see mm -hmm. you later, you know what I mean? Um, so what are they supposed to have someone out there watching? Right. You know, Toasted Owl. I mean, that's a drinking establishment. He's got two tables outside. Are they supposed to put a security guy out there? Or, or is it like? Does it read that it's this is it's supposed to be somehow separated from the? I mean, I think they just have to have security out there after one a.m. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, all of this, like with the patio, when he says, "Oh, the non-drinking families go there," like, do you, are you do. You, Ask the parents of the like, are you going to be drinking tonight? Yeah. Oh, no. We'd like to see you out there. Yeah, right. right. I mean, well, I suppose actually if, I don't the, think, I'm sure they don't. if the families, <laughs> well, here's how I, I would handle it. If the family came out and said, hey, can we sit down in the lower section? And uh, my response would be like, absolutely, we can't serve alcohol down there. So yeah. if you want to drink, you have to sit up in one of our other chairs. And that is the I question of, is that <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, so. Well, actually, um, i got to believe from what I've seen. Because I do, my daughter works there, so I go there mm -hmm. when she works. Because yeah. I kind of like to be there. Where? At, at the deck. Oh. So when she works her shift, so my so wife I and I will go and have a drink and have you know snacks or whatever yeah. and just kind of. But um, and I've seen a lot of changes, you know, since this whole thing. I didn't even know, you know, until that report came off that there was this massive fight. But other right. guys that I'm friends with told me what it was all about, that this girl really went there intentionally waiting for another girl. And just when she could, she attacked her, and then it just went to a huge 
But anyway, that's none of our concern. Um, so you're going to write that letter to. Uh, and we, we know Roberto's essentially deserves one, right? Uh, local burger, wouldn't they? Or we need to do the research and see if they're licensed. I need to do the research first, and yeah. then I need to send this to everybody at 2 a.m., not yep. just local burger. No, 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 I know. I'm just saying. Why don't we? So why don't you do the research and then through email you can communicate to us, but then we can put it on the agenda and then decide to send that letter. There's no big rush, right? We don't have to have it done next week, so we can decide exactly what we want to do. And so if you research a few things and you find, you can bring your findings to us. Okay. And then, you know, checking with MPD. I definitely want to see that um, they do a compliance down at what you call it the foundry. Yeah. Yeah. I want that. I would like that to happen. I don't know how you guys feel about that, but. There's no room for anything like that going on. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it wouldn't hurt just to have police presence in a place like mm -hmm. that all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm sure actually with her report, there, there probably will be. There probably will be. So, I can't be there all the time. That's the thing, so. Okay, so the, le the letter to Roberto's, is that it? Um, well, you were going to do the research on that, so. That's what research my local. understanding. Yes. So you're going to research local, research their license, see if you know that they didn't come and extend their area. No, no. And I don't even think that their area from the first one was that included. I mean, because they did two expansions, if you'll notice. They now. did. I looked in their file. They did the first one where okay. it was just like right out front, front and then around. So maybe look and see exactly what that says, the wording on that, because if it covers that whole outside, they may be covered, unless you already know. I did that. Yeah. Okay, so, all right. So then, yeah, letter needs to go to them. Okay. Um, automatic. And then you need to do the research, I think, on local and see if you determine. Oh, leave it up to you. If you determine a letter goes on based on your findings, you can email us. Yeah. If you want, and we can get back to you. Um, so then what would that letter say? Because would it say you <coughs> have this, you know, according to the, the um, extended hours license, you have to have everyone off this by 245 is that something that she writes a letter saying for local yeah for that Maybe depending like on what you find out any, anyone out you can't serve anyone anything including food after two you know go through the right 140 no alcohol two o'clock all so you're saying out I mean, right. what I mean you're doing. essentially telling them to change their business hours. right that's right yep. yeah unless what if they have a, and i don't know let's say they have a rule in place where they stop serving alcohol after midnight mm -hmm. then does it still apply or, or do they have an extended hours license? Is it a different license or they have to? They have like the 2 a.m.? Yeah, the 2 a.m. They might, I don't know. Okay. Everybody's got to be gone quarter of three. Right. And they're serving till three. The kitchen's open till three. Right. Right. Which, so someone I thought when I was talking about it, um, my wife thought they were open till four, but that might be two. But, but that's an interesting question. If they don't have the extended hour license, I mean, and they actually are stopping serving it, is it? Or is it more, more is it usually? Like, then, then can they do whatever? They that right. The patrons. Then they can continue serving food. Want. Have people in until three. I guess if they're not serving, but right. are they really not serving? <laughs> right. And so then do you do a compliance check? Right. I guess figure out what type of license they have. And whether or not they found a loophole. And yeah, because you'd think there'd be a sign posted saying we don't serve alcohol after midnight. Right. You know that there would have to be some right. Like that. I honestly yeah. just think that they were never informed. Right. It's fine. Right. Yeah. They're not surprised not sure to what that. you're supposed to do about that. Yeah. Like you, you can't allow them to do something that everyone else is complying with, but you're right. also then asking them to change their entire business model. Well, and it's on. I mean, if they were, yeah, if they were never informed. That's not their fault. But it doesn't mean they don't get to not be compliant. Yeah, but then I guess it's then once they're informed, which I guess we have the authority to do through Annie to inform them. You know, you may not be aware that this is it. And they don't necessarily, if, if we're allowing them to serve until 3, they can make corrective steps to lock up their own line. Yeah. It might be yep. a burden to them, but you take it all down and you put it away. Right. And yes. then your compliance checks with PD yep. figures that out. Yep. So there are ways around. We're not trying to shut people down or do things crazy. We want, like your one to Roberto's, would just like to say, hey, just a friendly reminder, you may need to 
you know, come before us to extend your space. Right. In other words, you're getting the letter because we already know you right. do. So now, if within those 30 right. days you don't get an action or a response from them, now we send a certified letter, or we do a compliance check. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and then if they're found in violation, they come before us. Which so you're doing, you know, them a favor, them a favor by sending the right. friendly. Um, and that's why I think they need one because the guy got one. So why should yeah. they? Oh, they yeah. Should. No, I mean everybody, and then I really am curious about the uh, the Greek restaurant. Mm -hmm. the fields, I really want to know about the, you know, the side of church hall. Do you even have a permit from the side of the See you from the DPW. And secondly, we already figured that's a violation or against the law, actually, to have your alcohol. Yeah, I don't even know what to do about that one. <coughs> I think it's a PD check. Tell them that they need to, yeah. Just have the foot patrol pay attention to it? Or make them aware of it? So within, these, within the time, the 30 days to our next meeting, why don't you, on your findings, email us about that for um, Philos or Files or whatever it's called. Okay. Yes. All right, and then if you need to send, if, in other words, if they are in true violation, we'll know through email, and then we can order a check and a, and a letter stating that you cannot open up on the sidewalk. No, they can't. So yeah, even maybe if they PD. Have if you already know that. Yeah, you know it's yeah. that's a it's a city ordinance. All right, so yeah. the PD needs to tell them that right away. Like. Yeah, today. I mean that might be another thing that. <coughs> and I mean, who knows? We don't know. So them, whether they have a license for the seating, that's sort of outside of our purview, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, right. you know, but it is within our purview to notify them that if they have outdoor seating and they don't have a liquor license, um, yeah, but that, that, you know, DYOB, that anyone who drinks out there is in violation, like let your patrons down. I mean, that, right, because so that's sort of a friend, and like you're helping people out. Yes, but also we don't, I mean, we don't license them, so who are we right. to tell them what to, that's, right. I feel like that's oh, solely oh, a PD thing. Oh, I, yeah. Then maybe There's just let the PD know that. Well, but we do license their common Vic. Yeah, so your friendly right. letter can say, we, you know, it's been brought to our attention that X, Y, and Z, you can rectify this by coming before us, applying for a seasonal wine and mold, and also your license for your seating. Wouldn't that rectify? Well, except they can do B, Y, and B inside. <coughs> I understand. I'm talking about yeah. the sidewalks here. Right. Right. But they don't really have control over what people do on the sidewalk. This is this should be a letter going to the people that were doing it on the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> because Philos doesn't know. I mean, they well, don't, don't they have a tell? license. Well, right. But they need to be informed. And when they are it's, educated on that, then they get to say yeah. to the patrons, oh, I'm sorry, but we don't allow. You cannot, it's a city ordinance, you can't drink up all out on the sidewalk, you don't have a license for that. And any old place that doesn't have a liquor <coughs> license isn't automatically a BYOB, it's up to the business establishment. Yeah, they've invited people to Right, pay. right, you have to, it's They're up to the establishment to allow it, so they're responsible for making sure that people are not drinking I mean, outside. Well, yeah. I, I would say as a business, like if I were Philos and I didn't know that, I would be you know what I mean? Like that would have been. I feel like you'd be doing me a favor okay. by saying just so you know, those guys can't drink outside. Like that. Well, that's what that they're saying. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. But it seems that you have hesitation on doing I, that. I, I just. Mean, I feel like so do we say like one of our commissioners were out? <laughs> yeah, right. Day? Or do you do yeah, the vague and just come to our attention? Wine, that but I, when I walked into, uh, you know, buy a bottle of water, I noticed there's no liquor license anywhere. So I said, do you say? I asked. I go, do you sell alcohol? She goes, no, it's BYOMB or whatever, you know. So I'm like, oh, really? Okay. And I left. So it's as simple as that. I mean, even if you wanted to just call over a PD and say, by the way, we don't know what the law states, but this restaurant is doing X, Y, and Z. Let them handle it if that's what you'd rather do. It's, it's up to you guys, really. Well, I think we established that we just want a hey, heads up letter. That, you know, depending on what you find, but you're pretty confident already that it's a city ordinance. Yeah. I don't know the number, but it is. Yeah. I've read it a bunch of times. Actually, I think it's 120 section one. Nice. But 
but I see your point. But your too. point is we don't license them at all yeah, with that. But there is alcohol on, the, on the premise, though. Yeah. So it's we not, do. It's on the city sidewalk. No, but inside. But inside, they have. if they have. So it's even though it's BYOB, there's alcohol on the premises. So we would be somewhat concerned, no? No, because it's it's, it's not, not under the license. Yeah, it's I get what you're just, saying. Yeah. Yeah. So. But, it, so I guess to me it's sort of like I, I feel that they should be informed for their own sake too. But then the question is, yeah, is that your should responsibility that or should it be coming right. from someone else? And yeah. and do we, since we're such nice people, so or <laughs> figure out who that is so that they can be informed? Heads up to the NPD. Or is it is frankly, is it you going in again and saying, hey, I've learned this? I mean, I don't know if you uh, want to get I to that myself, level. We yeah, open right. ourselves up to liability doing that. Yeah, right. Because uh, I was even, yeah. more than willing to go and do. All these other things when I first joined, they're like, uh, 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 right no away because it, it just opens the city up. That's why the PD has to handle it. It's, yeah, I know. So, yeah, um, well, yeah, or is it, yeah, just, yeah, no, I don't, I mean, you can do a ride along. <coughs> so, are we still doing ride alongs with PD? Yeah, you can do that. I took the CPA class last uh, winter and I signed up for one. I still haven't been contacted about it. Yeah, maybe they, they do do ride alongs. Yeah. So, in fact, they encourage it that um, if you wanted to do a ride along, you could do that. And then some mm -hmm. of these concerns might or may not be brought up in the cruiser as you're kind of mm -hmm. going around. And what they'll do is they'll do compliance checks with you, is from what I understand. I still mm -hmm. um, have not done my ride along. So, mm -hmm. but maybe that's what needs to happen. <coughs> to see exactly what it's like out there on the street, you know, dealing with them, so. Uh -huh. All right, so uh, any other new business or are we good? So uh, did we decide about Philo's? Well, I thought you were going to do a little research to figure <laughs> out if, right, so. you know, if you think you just need to tip off the NPD and let them handle it, or if you feel like you want to do a friendly reminder, or I don't know what the right thing is. Yeah, I mean, I I see Annie's point that it's not we, we don't it's have to through us. Right. So, yeah, we just happen to know about this. Um, so, but is it you're saying you can call community to do a compliance check for? Yeah, I mean, are they aware or? who doesn't have a liquor license? I don't know. It may not be. Yeah. And and then it's like but a compliance check on BYOB, right? right. 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 Like something that's not under our. Okay. What's what's what about that? You know, your compliance with your common vic is that um, are the seating out on the sidewalk? Does that matter to a common vic license? No, it doesn't. It's just if you have a kitchen for preparing. So yeah, you so that doesn't matter either. Right. right. So I mean, and, maybe yeah, a friend so of a friend let somebody yeah, out. You know, a DPW. I don't know. Yeah. Know. yeah. <laughs> If you think that writing a letter from this commission is the uh, wrong thing, then, you know, which I think you're presenting good evidence that it might yeah. be. Yeah, you know, I, I'm feeling Then we should just yeah. pass on it and maybe just pass the information along. Yeah. I think it's the same thing as Joe Schmo walking in front of City Hall with a beer in his, right. in, a, in a brown bag. Like, it's kind of the same thing. Correct. Like they're, they're just walking on the street and... And yeah, it's illegal, and we saw it, but right. it doesn't mean yes, that I agree with you. the license I mean, commission. You know, the yes. point yeah. is some letter. To yeah, I think all saying, true. Do you know that this is happening? The point is, <laughs> <Yeah. though, laughs> you know, when I first joined the uh, license commission, I asked if it, you know, and I was told that you know MPD does it, but we do. If also, I want to say I was told that if we witness a violation, that you know we're expected to bring that to light. You know what I mean? So we are, however, we are working for the city. I mean, it's a violation of the city ordinance, though. Not a license commission rule and regulation. I understand that, but are we not here for the city? Are okay. we not? So, you know what I mean? Yeah, so. It would be the same thing as a ticketing parking officer walking by and maybe seeing and happen to know that ordinance because they were studying and knew it and brought it to light or something. I don't know. You know, they were looking at. The establishment next door that does have a liquor license and how can you not look to the right or left and see the other two establishments that are you know on both sides 
you know, Fresh Pasta, I think, is the other one that I was, um, and that was behind the bar. They had a uh, uh, license that I was concerned with, but how is that out of the question? I don't understand. In other words, if I'm there and, and I happen to be looking into Mama Iguanas, mm -hmm. and I witnessed what I saw with alcohol out on the sidewalk, and I was curious and said, okay, well, I went in to look for their liquor license, and they don't actually have a liquor license. Me knowing the law, am I not supposed to bring that to NPD, you know, and, uh, and show, you know, and tell them? I mean, yeah, I guess I just like for a past defense. What are you, what are you supposed to do about it? Well, you don't do anything except for just notify them, and if they don't want to do anything about it, that's and that's up to them. That'll be NPD. NPD, yeah. Okay, so I. Tell them that there was people. Like I would have to like be like. Yeah. I would just say um, friendly reminder when you're requesting your other compliance checks. They, by the way, um, a member of our commission, you know, witnessed people with open container on the sidewalks. Don't know if you want to look into that or not. Okay, I can do that. It's in front of the establishment, that, that has to be my opening. That, right. that, that is that sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Yes. So, now you're leaving it totally up to them, but at least you're just informing them. So. Okay, I, I can do that. Okay. okay. Perfect. All right. Any other new business? No. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.